So, next question from Spain as well. How does climate change affect humans? Okay, so I guess I would ask the question for you, right? I can answer your question with the question first. And that would be how does, what is not affected by climate change, right? I mean, climate change is changing the, the greenhouse gases is the very air that we breathe. Right, so the 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 um, carbon dioxide in the very air that we breathe is increasing, and the carbon dioxide affects how much heat is trapped in the air, and it affects how many um, the, and the heat affects how many clouds there are because to have water in the atmosphere you have evaporation. So think of the ocean surface. Some of the water, if, as the ocean surface warms, there's more and more evaporation of water from the ocean. So there's more and more water vapor, which is clear and invisible, and it goes into the atmosphere, and it rises up and cools down and forms these little tiny water droplets. And these water droplets then um, collide and get bigger, and they form clouds. And if they get higher and higher up, they, they turn into ice crystals instead, so they have clouds that are even higher up made of ice crystals. And so you can talk about the connections. Remember, everything is interconnected. So, so humans have, we've lived on the planet for a long time, right? The, the climate and so the weather patterns and the conditions that we experience depend on where we live on the planet. If we live in the North Pole, in, in the far north, we, we have a totally different situation and if we live near the equator. But the problem is, is that the overall system is shifting. So the equator is getting hotter. Um, and, and as you go up to the North Pole, it's getting hotter even faster. So animals on the planet are used to living in a certain temperature and, and conditions of temperature and as the planet warms, these animals have to move. They have to move if they have to move further north to, to, to find cooler regions. Or if they're on a mountain, they have to go up higher and higher on to the mountain to get cooler conditions. Or if they're fish that live near that used to live near um, near near the equator or something, it's too hot. They have to swim and they go further and further north. So for example, you know, some of the big sharks, for example, are going further and further north and they're being seen off places like England and uh, parts of Canada where they never used to go that far north before because everything's warming. So this is called uh, migration, animal migration. And you can also talk about people, you know, many humans that live in places on the planet are having to move to different regions because of droughts or because something has happened you know if you're a farmer and you can no longer farm nothing grows anymore it's too hot you have to move to a city maybe or you have to move to a different region where you can or, or you have to learn how to farm something else that will grow in the region so so climate change is is, is affecting each and every one of us in in, in many, many profound ways. So you can try to think about some ways maybe that climate change is affecting you right now because, you know, do you have a type of tree that used to grow in your backyard and no longer grows? Or do you get a lot of rainfall and sometimes the streets get flooded and they never used to? Um, and you could ask your parents, you know, how has the climate changed from when you were a kid to now? Right, and just try to keep the conversation. All never be afraid to ask questions, and asking questions, even sometimes if you know the answer already to the question, it's very good to ask the question because then, like, say you want to teach somebody something, 
right? Instead of just talking about to your parents or something, somebody about, oh, let me tell you all about the greenhouse gas effect. If you ask them the question first, what, what is the greenhouse gas effect? And then they try to explain it and then you already know the answer and then you tell them what it is, right? It, it, it gets the conversation going. So always ask questions. Remember that when you're talking yourself, you're not learning. But when you're asking a question and somebody else is talking, you're always learning, always, always learning. So that's the key thing. Keep learning as much as you can about what's happening to the, to the world of, of, around us. Okay, Paul, so we're going for the last one. The last question. Okay. Last question. All right. Spain. All right. Okay, so... Last question. The last question from this girl. Do you think the ocean hole is causing global warming? Okay, <coughs> so this is a great question. And uh, I teach um, climate change at the university quite often. Um, so I teach first year university students. And I usually ask them this question, you know, as part of, uh, of their test question. and you know, maybe about a third of them get the answer wrong, right? So this is a, it's a common thought that the ozone hole causes climate change because the ozone hole is something missing, ozone, and then the idea is that that would allow more sunlight to come through and cause the warming. But no, no, the ozone, the, the climate, um, climate change, global warming is because of the greenhouse gases increasing in the atmosphere. The ozone hole occurs mostly over Antarctica because there's something called chlorine molecules at low levels in the, um, that are they're put up from industry into the upper atmosphere, the high atmosphere, and they react with um, the ozone molecule, which is like O2, but you add an extra oxygen, O3, very unstable molecule, but it absorbs ultraviolet radiation and, and provides a protection over the earth to stop the um, high energy ultraviolet light from, from reaching the earth and harming uh, plants and animals and things on the surface. So, so this, um, so th so, so this um, effect of the, the ozone hole, which and, and you re need really, really cold temperatures for this to happen in the upper atmosphere. So it generally happens just over Antarctica. It did happen over the Arctic one year in 2010, very unusually, but it's not, it's a separate phenomena. And it's a problem that the earth, that we had. Okay, let me tell you a little bit of the story. Um, the, there was a company that was making material, a gas, which was good for making refrigerators. And they made this um, material, uh, chlorofluorocarbons, um, this chemical, which would, would be great for refrigerators, but some of it, enough of it would leak into the atmosphere that it created the ozone holes, which then reduced the ozone layer and caused a huge problem. So the world came together in 1980s and they met and they had this big meeting called the Montreal Protocol where they banned the substances that would contribute to the ozone hole. So, so since then, so this is a good example of how the world came together on an environmental issue. Scientists did their reports, they found out the problem and within a few years the politicians all met and they came up with a global world agreement to reduce the chemicals causing the ozone hole and the ozone hole has been getting smaller and smaller in general since then and so we basically have solved the issue so we need to do the same thing for climate change we need to you talked to, we talked about mitigation talked a bit about adaptation but we need to talk all about restoration climate restoration restoring a healthy climate for 
you guys. So, so thank you for all your wonderful questions. This has been, this has been a very, you know, very, very, um, very, very good experience, you know, fantastic um, questions. And I'm very happy to be able to, to help with some of the answers. So, so, so thank you. Well, Paul, thank you very much. Thank you very much for all, all your answers. And, okay, uh, so the, the man behind the scenes, <laughs> Alfonso. So, uh, so uh, do you want to say a few words about how, yeah, how, I mean, like, how, how on earth did these kids put together these questions? And, uh, okay, well, uh, this is an initiative that began in, in a primary school in Tudela, in Spain. The name of the school is Colegio Huertas Mayores. And these three uh, primary school teachers, uh, Marisa, Luisa, and Marisol, are, are the ones to blame, you know? They have this beautiful initiative. So we, we, we want to thank these three women for this fantastic work, bringing together all these kids from different, different schools across Europe. And uh, well, hopefully it, this can be this can be set this can set an example to to other schools. And uh, Paul, thank you very much well, for your you. time. I mean, the, right? the, the children are the, the future. And, the children are the future. Know, what can be more inspiring to us? Exactly. And give us uh, exactly. You know, hope uh, and. Uh, you know, Peter Fyakowski, I encourage you to look at the Healthy Climate Alliance website and the idea of climate restoration. Because Peter was saying, this is, scientists have done their job, we know enough about climate, you know, we need to get this, the, the problem now to engineers and to figure out ways to get CO2 levels down to healthy levels and restore a healthy climate for you, children, for your kids when you have kids and grandkids and 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 so on. So so thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks to you Paul and thanks to all the kids. Thanks to all the kids that took part in this in in you know in, in this in this work in this thank you so much. Okay, goodbye for now. Bye.